Okay guys, on the old head, yeah, it was a real pleasure with the clay on this. Uh, the, you'll see the flow sheet's a wreck because the clay, the clay kept getting sucked into the port and ruining my measurements. Not only that, I had problems with it sealing on the, the bench. Let's look at that. All right, he sent me a nice MLS gasket. But with these rivets, I actually had to relieve the, the head where the rivets are, and it still wouldn't seal. Then, after fiddling with that, the intake valve would not stay closed, so I had to hold it closed. And then, even when I hold it closed, we have leakage on both seats because they're not concentric. So... When we go over the flows, I'm going to say from 0.05 to 3 inch are skewed. Okay, so keep that in mind because what I'm planning on doing today, first thing is put a valve job on so they at least seal. And I think I will probably shim up the spring, have a little more tension because these valves are fairly tall. Okay, so, first opinion. Oh, I didn't say I used Brian's uh, adapters for the first time. That was, that worked out really well. He did an awesome job. Can't thank him enough. And they're almost exactly the right bore size for this big block Oldsmobile, which is very similar to the bore size on a big block Ford 460. So, that worked out really well. Um, considering the design, I think they did, uh, the originator of these heads did a really good job. Uh, I do see some airspeed issues. He wants me to uh, tell him before I do anything. <laughs> and I, I really don't blame him. So we'll see how that goes. In fact, I'm just going to aim him at this, uh, this video and say, uh, this is what I think we should do. All right, let me pull this off. We could look at some wet flow and some other cool things and go over the flows. Okay, just gotta hit that pause button. Let me set up the lights. Okay, guys, the, this is interesting. Now let's take a look at our angle, right? Our angle is actually heading that way, but let's take a look at that port orientation. Okay, now the, this has just the slightest angle off to the left. Our, our liquid flow is good. It goes all the way to the, the roof, which is great, but it's very thin. Okay, I'm willing to bet there would be horsepower in widening that out. Uh, I'll talk to the owner about what I think can be done with that. As you can see, the... Uh, the valve job is basically a complete radius valve job. Okay, and since we are going to be dealing with liquid flow, uh, not ideal. Now, a complete radius valve job probably flows more on the flow bench. Something to keep, uh, keep in mind because when I do the valve job, I actually expect to lose some flow. But it'll also change some of my air speeds, which would be interesting to look at. It actually looks quite good on the bore. Uh, I'm really not, I'm not upset about the liquid on the bore. I would like to see it a little more spread out on the bowl. Now, this looks like these aren't, uh, my spacers aren't exactly lined up. I assure you they are. It's just the light reflection from our overhead lights. Okay, looking down its throat really doesn't look too bad. I mean, I like the way it hit in the bowl itself and on the guide quite a bit. Uh, when we go over air speeds, it's really interesting how these are set up. We just got a little tiny bit of blue on that short side radius. So make sure you guys can see how tall that short side radius is. It's very tall. Let's give a, a quick, quick estimate how tall it 
Okay, that short side measures 1.26 inches from the deck. <laughs> and it, it absolutely needs a short side that high. In fact, it may need it a little higher than that. We'll find out when we do a, a little more of our airspeed work. The exhaust did better than I expected because it's so heavily bent, but it is a good size port. I would say it's... As far as volume, pretty close to a big block Chevy volume port. Maybe even more because it's longer. And uh, the air speeds on it don't look great, but it flows really well. So he did some good. He did some good work on this exhaust port. Uh, do I think it can be improved? Yeah, but we're going to have to work on getting the. It's going to be more work to do the intake than the exhaust. The exhaust we could probably let fly the way it is. You guys will be able to give me uh, your opinions on that in the comments after we take a good look at everything. Okay, the short side radius on the exhaust looks really good. He did a pretty good job on it. Uh, the valve job, like the intake, needs work. It would not seal. So we're going we're gonna to have to fix that up first thing today. And just a final look at the intake bowl. All right, let's get into our flows. Okay, first thing to note, the garage was ridiculously hot. So that's where we started. By the time I was done, it was like 91 degrees in the garage. The flow bench was not happy at all. You know it's bad when you can start to smell the motors. Okay, like I said before, these are all going to be hot, higher than they, they should be. Okay, 231, yeah, I believe that. I think that's probably an accurate number at that point. Because it is a 2.25 intake valve. And it's a not a small port. It's a good size port. So I expect that. I mean, in reality, the only thing I've done that comes close to this are those 9 degree small block Chevy heads. All right, they had about the same size valve on the intake. They had a smaller exhaust valve. They were just a 1.6 because it's designed for a small block chamber. And the bore would be smaller. Now, let's take a quick look. All right, not bad, not bad. By 500, 324, not bad. Um, I think these flowed more on his bench. I'll, I'll, I'll find out for sure. So he may be upset at me just when he gets a, a look at these, but I'm going to say it again, not 100% accurate. Anytime you got leakage on the bench, it's going to skew your results. But I did the best I could with what I got, and uh, we'll have to deal with it piece by piece. Swirl curve is interesting. And you know what? It's, it's also supposedly a street head. So I limited our air speeds to uh, 600. I took our, all of our air speeds at 600 lift. I figure a big block, 500 cubes, be running at least a 0.6 inch lift, I would think. Take a look at our swirl curve, right? It has a decent progression and then it goes backwards, right where it should go up. And it actually had a reverse. So I'm going to say not ideal. Not ideal. Now, you have to remember that the port we're using, let's take a look at it, is our outside port, right, which is aimed more like the Ford at, at the corner. Now, Fords leave the dicom on the inside wall, right? we got the same thing going on because that's the, straight, that's the straighter shot, right? It comes in relatively straight right to it, you know, something like this. That's what we got, pretty close. Right? Put that in the middle. That's what we got. Our inside port is going to be more like a small block Chevy design. I expect, I expect more Dicom to be on our outside wall. And it'll have a completely different swirl curve. Now, there's probably no way to get those swirl curves even, at least not in my knowledge. But I would think the closer we can get those two, well, I wouldn't even say that. They're gonna be. They're gonna be have different swirl curves. They're gonna have different burn times because a completely different design. Doesn't make it bad though. Something to keep in mind. Okay, exhaust. 
worked out quite well. But same thing, these are probably higher than they're going to be my next test. All right, uh, 600, we got 271, which is right on online with those uh, big Mopar heads I was doing for Rob. And you know, 289 with a pipe, pretty darn good. Now, when we take a look at our air speeds, they're a little wacky. I mean, look at our intake push rod pinch. Okay, everything's on the floor because the floor is a huge ramp. Nothing happening up top compared to the floor. Now, this is interesting. When was the last time we saw roof speeds anywhere near this low? So that tells me that port may actually be too big. Remember, that's 600, so that's moving 348 CFM, and you've got no airspeed on the roof. They are fairly even, so that worked out pretty good. Uh, and you know what? Take a look at our even our short side. Relatively low speeds. Now this wall, right, our cylinder wall, he gave me a little info on our cylinder wall. Let's take a look at that one. Okay, this is our cylinder wall short side radius. See that filler right there? He says that's worth like 10 CFM. Well, guess what? After I did the air speeds, looks like it could use some more. Interesting, right guys? So, I think we may do that. I may put some clay on that wall and see what it does. But we got a lot of testing to do, and it's going to be tough because it's 4th of July weekend, and it's already hot, and the little AC can't keep up. But uh, we'll do what we can. And uh, let's take a look at our exhaust air speeds. I think those are pretty interesting, too. Okay, now we got great flow out of the exhaust, but it's a good size exhaust. So how did we do as far as speeds across the port? Now, I know it surprised me. I mean, we got almost 300 here, 176. I'd like to see. I'd like to see it more even than that. Now, if we make it more even, does that necessarily mean our flow will go up? Not 100 percent, right? I mean, nothing. There's nothing 100 percent. Death and taxes, guys. And taxes are going up. Take a look at the middle of the port. We go from almost 300. To 217. That's a huge step down in velocity, right? Step down in velocity. Even this side was already slow. Step down in velocity. This corner dies. It's bouncing between 0 and 84. Nothing happening in that corner. Center, not bad. Okay, I can deal with the, the center like that. But look at this. This is unusual. When was the last time we saw a floor speed that high? So, this corner is working, and this corner is working. But yet, our flows are really good, considering. Do I think there's room for improvement? Yes, I do. First thing I'm going to do, valve job, and then we'll take flows that don't leak, and we'll see where we are. All right, guys. Trying to think on this. I want to help. I want to thank my friend Andy. He gave me a hand yesterday. We changed out uh, the supporting beams for the uh, the porch deck o over by the pool yesterday, and uh, saved me a ton of money. So I, at some point today, I got to go over and do a little electrical work for him, which is uh, all good for me. He's funny. He's like, <laughs> I took a couple days off for uh, I said a, a contractor to come over. I usually don't hire contractors. But I'm old now, so, and I'm busy, so I was going to actually do this. And the contractor looked at the job, and the price of the job doubled, and then he didn't show up when I took days off, and I was pissed. So Andy's the kind of guy, he comes over and he goes, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to come over, and we're going to knock this out. And that's exactly what we did. So i got to thank him. He's, uh, he's really good. One of my uh, Italian brothers. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out, listening to my BS. Hope you have a great holiday weekend. Thanks for hanging.